which is really amazing, you know, so life is good for us. You know, the most high has visited us <laughs> and he's, and he's developing our character. He's developing our character. And I, I just found like, he's not going to accept anything less, especially, of, you know, of us. He's just not because our, our, uh, our title, like who we are is so huge. I mean, it's, it's, it's like the stars. So he's, he's going to, he's going to make sure that we are right with him. So I praise him for that. All right. So let's get into our lesson. It won't be a long lesson. it will be a short lesson today, but it depends on how we get through it. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Cool. All right. Wonderful. So this is what we're looking at today. Lesson number 17. Of course, you're going to get your vocabulary words that you have here at the top. Um, let me pull this down right quick. Which is interesting is that sometimes when I be teaching, a lot of the, the ideas that I come up with are found in our, our lessons. I don't do this purposely. I just find these things, which is interesting. So um, today in our study, we found about this word, what was just briefly mentioned. Um, color do I want to use? Mm, yeah, she's should use red. Okay. Uh, this right here is called shear. Okay. That first letter right there is the SH. Okay. So S what is going on with this pen? Is it because my fingers are cold or what? Why is it doing that? It's a, the SA sound. Okay. Why? Because it has that dot over this part right here. You see that dot? That dot tells you that it's an SH sound. Okay. And it's shear. That's how you pronounce it. Shear, like S H E E R. Shear. Okay. You say, well, where does these two E's come from? Well, the S H is going to be this first letter right here, the shin. I'm going to change this out. Forgive me, you guys. I don't know what's going on. Let me put a different pen. Use a different stamp or draw. Is that it? Okay. All right. All right. I guess that's it. All right. The next one is ear. Pronounce it two E's, E, E, and an R, ear. The reason why it's this E, E sound is because it's a dot and a yode, okay? Every time you see a dot and a yode, it's going to be that sound. Anytime you just see a dot by itself, it's just like an I, like an it, like the little dot that goes over I, 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 I versus E, E, okay? Like B or C or T, okay? So if it's one dot, then it's a I sound like an it, okay? Or a bit or pit. But if it's a dot and a yode, then it's going to be this sound here, these two E's, okay? So we have a shear, we have an ear, we have a matza. It's not called matzo, okay? This is the Ashkenaz way of saying it. Our vowel points allows us to tell us that that's a long A, so it's matza, okay? Um, this dot that's right here by this zadi, right, tells you that it's going to be two, two zadis. Okay, do you see that dot right there, everyone? You see this? That dot that's inside of there? Right there? That dot right there tells you it's two zadis. So it's going to be a longer zadi sound. So it'll be ma and then sa is the next one over here. Matsa. Okay. So anytime you see that dot, it tells you inside of a letter, it lets you know I need to make two of those. But you can hold on it a little bit longer, like matza. You can hold it longer. Okay. If it's a mem, it'd be, you know, sham and hold it. Okay. So you can hold it. So you don't have to repeat it. Okay. Um, and then in some cases here, you might see that. You say, well, what do I do about this one here off of this pay? Because that's called mishpa. Mishpa, not mishpapa, mishpa. Okay. And that's mishpaka, which has to do with family. And 
when we get through this book, we're going to go really into detail about the grammatical structure. Okay, right now we're just talking about the verbs and how they are used, and then they give you some um, some nouns, and they'll give you some vocabulary words. So the vocabulary words is a song, it's a city, it's matza, it's to scream, it's to uh, a ruler. You know, one of the names that we have for ruler right here is called a moshel. And uh, let me see here, where'd it go? Mo shell. Okay. And a mo shell sounds like Masha. It sounds like um, Mishle, which has to do with Proverbs. It has to do with rule, ruler, to be a ruler. So there's several different words for rulers, not just this one particular word. So when I first started learning the language, it's like, well, I thought the word for ruler was an adone, which is a master. And then I'll find this word with a Moshel. And Moshel has to do with a ruler over a kingdom. Okay. And then, uh, so you're going to have different words. So you might have like, you know, two to three different words for a ruler, but it just might be one's ruling a household, one's ru ruling a kingdom, one might be ruling a prison, that type of thing. Okay. Um, over here, this word up here called Kasil is a fool. And what I know from this is that this um, kaf and the samak right here, these two letters by themselves means to cover. Okay. So literally what a fool is, is somebody that covers their mind. They just cover their mind. That's what a fool is. See, so you can see like, you know, you could look at these definitions and these nouns and these verbs and be like, okay, well, that's how you say, that's what it. Is called like a kasil is called a fool, but if you don't know the actual um, understanding of the Hebrew letters, then you won't understand uh, the actual true meaning of it because a fool can just be you know an abstract term. So let's just stop right here for a second. And ask myself, well, okay, well here's a kaf and here's a samak. Those are the first two letters. So how can I see a fool in this? And what do you mean by covering? Would it, how, why would I say cover? Off this first letter, what's that first letter mean? A hand. Yes, it's the palm. And you use the palm of the hand to do what? To cover. cover. Okay. And then you got the samak right here, which we learned today means to turn. Right? Okay. Or in circle, like a snake. Okay. That's why it's designed like a snake. Okay. So it means to turn. So what does it mean to turn the palm over? And how do you turn the palm over? You turn the palm over to hide something. So the person who's a fool is the person who covers their mind from learning. <laughs> Woo, this is crazy. Okay. Now let's break it down even a little further. So that's the cover, right? And look at the last two letters. What are these last two letters? What does this letter right here mean? What does this yo mean right here? Well, grammatically, it means he. Or uh, it's also a hand. A hand. That's how you know it's he. It's his hand. Okay. And what's in his hand right here? What's next? The staff. The yeah. staff. So a fool is literally someone who covers his mind from the one who has the hand who has the staff in his hand. This one who has the staff in his hand is the one who's leading the people. That's the leader. So you literally got to be a fool not to be listening to most high. <laughs> and what does the text tell us? A fool has said in his heart that there is no Elohim. See what I'm saying? So when you learn those different, I, that's why, um, you know what I'm going to do? I don't know if all of you have it, but I'm going to send you over a, um, Picture graph. Did I send any of you guys the picture graph? Yes, in the, in the beginning. Yeah, okay. All right, so if you don't have it, I'm going to send it anyway. If you got it, you got it. But I want to send the picture graph so you can start looking at these letters. So you can be like, okay, I know what that is. Oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. So when you look at these things, you'll be like, okay, you could put a story together. And that's the beauty of the language. So when the Ashkenazis are teaching it right now, they're teaching it just saying it's a fool or this is a family. And this is grabbed, and this is peaceful and quiet, and this means to scream, but they don't tell you what the letters actually mean, and that's the that's the danger. 
is because you don't get the full understanding, all right? Um, because of course, you know, it depends on what their intentions are. All right, so today we're still on um, the present tense, okay? Last week we're still, we were present tense and we looked at group number one. Somebody tell me what does group number one mean? So, what type of action is it? Passive. Yeah, it's simple. Awesome. That's the action. What's group number two? San Francisco, California. Forceful. Forceful. Then the next, last one is causative. Okay. Causative. All right. So that's group number three. This is group number two. And this is group number one. And the final one is one who does the work on themselves, which is a hip pile okay, to do on oneself. So group number one is telling us that it's passive. And you can have group number one passive, group number one active. You can have group number one in a past tense. You can have group number one in a future tense. And now we're talking about group number one in the passive, I mean, in the um, present tense, which last week we talked about the active which you're the one doing the action, but this week we're talking about the passive form. And so the passive form is going to tell us that the passive form, as we know, always looks at the person or the thing that the action is being, this is our key word, done on. That's what it is. And they're going to give us an example. It's not the person. It's not the person that's doing the action. It's the person that the action is being done on. It's the person or the thing that the action is being done on. So let's go over it again. Active is the one who is doing the action. Sorry about the pen, you guys. It just doesn't want to cooperate. That's why I'm writing like really bad. Active is the person who's doing the action. Okay. That's the one who's doing the action. When you talk about passive, that means that, the, you know, someone says all oh, that person is being passive. They mean this, let, they're letting something happen to them. Okay. So we're not talking about, the active, we're talking about the passive. We're talking about this form right here. And so when we're talking about passive, it's being done on someone or something, okay? By somebody else or by something else, okay? So instead of saying David is guarding, which David is, or Dawid, he is guarding, which is the, he's actively doing it. We would say that the house, is being guarded by Dawid. So we can see that active, David is the one actively doing it. Passively, the house is being guarded by David. Being guarded is the passive form of the verb, the action, because it's describing the thing that the action is being done on. In order to say being guarded in the Lashon HaKodesh, which is the set apart language, we have to use the group number one passive form, okay? Being something, being, right? So that's passive. Now this thing past tense, it's passive, okay? So what does this passive form look like is the question, all right? And we saw the answer to this question in our introductory lesson to the present tense. Can you remember? What we said then, well, the answer is that the passive form of group number one verb always has a noon added unto the front of the root. Well, doesn't this sound familiar? Right? So remember, it's just another piece to our puzzle. So if we go back to our past tense, not present tense, past tense, right? And we're looking at a simple action will be group number one. If we were going to say that somebody was doing something in a simple way, we just add this sign right here, this ah sound. Okay. If we say that, and that's active, simple active. If I wanted to say someone was doing something passive or something was happening to someone passively, I would add the noon. See? So the past and the present, they have this letter in common. And I'm going to show you some examples. I don't want to get you confused. Just understand that they're using this letter, the same letter that they use in the past tense for the passive is the same letter that they're using for the present tense passive. Okay. 
So to say is being guarded in Lashon HaKodesh, all we have to do is simply take the verb to guard, which is Shamar, and add to it the noon on the front of it. And this is what you get. Nishmar. So I think the question for us would be like, okay, so you're saying that what happened in the past, uh, group number one, is happening exactly as the present. So how are we going to know the difference? Because the letters are still, the, they're identical. They're the same. What are we going to do? How would you know? And we're going to get to that in just a moment. It says the house is being guarded. Okay, so the, which is ha, and bayith, which is the house, is passive, which you know, and shamar is being guarded. Okay. I'm going to let you guys break some stuff down right quick for practice. I'm going to see where your heads are so I can help you answer any questions that you have. So remember, everything is being. That's passive. Being. A different color. Being. 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 Not are being. Is being. Is. Not am being. Is. 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 It only makes sense when you say it. Okay. So if I have the right here, what letter is that in this over here? What letter is it? A. Yes, bingo, right here. So how do you say bread? Lechem. Thank you, right here. Lechem, perfect, right there. How about is? Where's is? Mm -hmm. Huh? No. Mm -hmm. No. It's, Im it's implied. It's implied. Bingo. Because oh. there is no letter or word is in Hebrew. They only put that there for translational purposes. So is is inserted. R is inserted. Or M is inserted. And there is no letter A in Hebrew. Those were in our first lessons that we learned. Excellent. So that's being implied. Okay. Just for translational purposes. Now. In this word right here, we have a call. So what does a call mean? Don't look over here. I don't care about over here yet. What does this mean right here? What is the key letter of call? What is it? It means a simple verb, which is to, to eat. Simple. Okay? So simply, it's right there. So we could take all this away right now. I don't care about any of that. Because that's just how it sounded out right now. Okay? So a call is to, to eat. Now, I'm putting on this noon on the front of this three-letter verb, which means this piece of this puzzle changes. Anytime we add something to a, a root, it changes its form and it changes its meaning. When it's by itself, when there's just the three letters, right there is called infinitive. Okay. I Maybe mean, I'm going a little ahead of myself. It's infinitive, meaning that this is what people do anyway. You're always going to eat. It's a perfect route. It's infinitive. Everyone's going to eat. Birds are going to eat. We're going to eat. Fish going to eat. Everybody eats. That's why it's called an infinitive. Okay. So when I have, and it's perfect because it's just right there. This is what people do and what animals and insects do. Everybody does it. That's why it's perfect. It's an infinitive. The moment that I add a letter or something to it, I'm changing Anytime there's a change, and a change mean an add or subtract, okay? So I'm adding something to it. And when I added was this letter noon right here. And so what we're learning today is that this letter noon is what? Is it active or is it passive? Passive. It's passive. So what I want you to understand is when you look at that, I don't want you to just look at it and say, well, I know how to say it, which is a noon, like night, okay? Or... Um, noon or uh, n what else? Not okay. So we know how to say it. We know how to make the sound right, but we got to understand why it's there, right? So this is a piece of the puzzle that you're going to see all the time. You're going to see it. You're going to see it in a simple. You're going to see it in group one that we already discussed, which is simple. And right now we're still in group number one. But this is a past tense. This is a present tense. They have the, exactly the same letter that they're using. Okay. So that's just a piece that they use to make it what? To make it passive. So the noon is equivalent to a passive letter. 
Um, you would have to ask yourself, just let's think about this for a second. Why are they using, because I don't know, but maybe if we talk about it, we can figure it out. Why are they using this letter noon? And noon in Hebrew means seed. That's what it means. And it means to continue. Right. So what I try to find everyone is the connection between the agriculture and the letter, because if I can find out the, the, the actual agriculture to the letter, I can better understand the reason why they're using it and why would they use this as a passive form? So what do you guys have any ideas? I don't get to talk because I don't like because if you talk to yourself too long, people say you're crazy. So what? <laughs> that's why I'm having this class. So what um, what do you guys think? When you think about a seed and you think about when it goes through its growth and its development, could it be that they're using the noon as saying, um, when it says it's passive, meaning that they're, the action is happening to someone else? They're not doing the action, so the noon is not doing the action, but the action is happening. The noon is, the noon is um, causing an action to be changed. It's causing this, this noon to uh, make the action of this verb passive. And I'm going to, I don't know, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll just, just want to see if anybody had any ideas, because that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to look and find out, well, this means seed, and it means continue. So if it's a seed, it has to do with continue. Why are they adding that to it? Is that because, and it's passive, meaning that, and it means being or it means was, you see? Um, so why? I don't know, we'll figure it out, okay? Um, what is Seuss? Horse. Horse. Perfect, got that down. What is the three letter root of this word? Mem, Kav, and the Resh. Right, Mish meaning what? Car. Well, what, is, what does makar mean? Because that's what it is, is makar. Sold. Sold. Thank you. To sold or to sell. Sold means past tense. Okay. Or has is being sold. It's in the process. It's presently being sold. Um, but the actual word of the root is called makar. And it's very simple three letter root. And then this one here is saying now that th this this something is happening. So that which is selling must be what? Sold to be passive. To sell something is an active way of doing it. I'm selling something. Now this is saying that it's been sold. See how you can use different words, sell and sold. One is active and one is passive, right? So it's causing us to look at things a lot more and with, uh, with some real good eyes because you have to really look at it. Um, Somebody read to me this right here. I and I Nishal Nishlach. Yeah, Nishlach. Yes, Nishlach. Yes, Nishlach. So is so is being sent. Okay. So the boy is being sent. What does this yo with this dot mean? What does that yo with that dot mean? What does that mean? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to understand about that? The double, like the yes, perfect, Doctor Yared. So you got a, two yodes right there. They just use that dot. So the dot with the yod is equivalent to two yodes. The first yod is going to be used in connection with the hey in this vowel and then that sound, which is called high, okay? H-A-I, high, okay? And then you say the next one, which is yaled, 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 okay? Yaled. So high yaled, okay? High yaled, nishlak, nishlak, okay? So the boy is being sent, okay? Um, the boy is not sending, okay? The boy is being sent. So the action is happening to him. That's why it's passive, okay? When I send this over to you, look at your notes on the bottom and it'll tell you where to go. Um, 
Very simple. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you about the difference between um, the past tense and the present tense group number one passive. Okay. It says we mentioned in the last session that there are only four ways of using a Hebrew verb in the present tense. There's only four ways. Don't forget this. Okay. There's only four ways using this in particular present tense and the, in group number one in active, right? So here are the active ways. And these are the four different ways you can say it. You can say Shomer, you can say Shomereth, you can say Shomerim, and you can say Shomeroth, okay? It's only four ways. So the group number one passive form, right? Group number one is simple. Also has only four ways of being used, okay? Four ways of using the verb. Let's see what they are. Before we get started with that, though, I want you to understand something because they don't they don't tell you this. I'm going to show this to you. I asked a question. Like, how would you know that this is in the present tense? OK, because here I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. That's why we're only doing two pages today, because I need you to get this up here at the top. When it talked about there's only four ways, you can see that everything is using this um, this right here. They got all those different those little was right there with that, that O sound, you know. So you got Shomer, you got Shomereth, you got Shomarim, you got Shomaroth, okay, all with the three letter roots, the Shin, the Mem, and the Resh. All here, same things all over time. Okay. So then you ask yourself, okay, well, what is this wa? Well, that wa right there is an active present tense. It's active because that's what we learned last week. Okay. But when you look at, and then of course the shomoroth on the end, that, that wa right there on the end is not a um active. This one right here is saying that this is just oath. And oath is just plurality for the feminine, just like the em right here is the plurality for the male. So this is an individual, a male. This one here is a female. This is a male, plural, and this is male, uh, feminine. I mean, feminine, plural, excuse me. Did I say male, feminine? All right, so those are the only four ways you can do it. All right, so I'll do it again. This is masculine singular. And you can have first person, second person, and third person in that in that thing or in that category. Over here, it is a mask, it's a feminine singular. And you can have it in the first person, second person, third person. Over here, you have a masculine plural, and you can have it in first person, second person, third person. Over here, you'll have feminine plural. And that could be first person, second person, third person. So everyone, all we're ever going to be dealing with is males and females. That's all you're ever going to be dealing with. Okay. And you're going to always be dealing with this category here. First person, second person, third person, whether it's in singular or it's in the plural. So if you can identify and know what those are, it makes everything easier for you. Because you'll be like, oh, I know what that ending is. Oh, I know the reason why that Tav is there. That's why they have it highlighted there, okay? Oh, that doesn't have that, that the Tav on the end, so I know that that must be masculine, see? So when you look at the difference right here, you say, well, what's the difference between these two? What's this difference in this one? Well, of course, these vowel points down here are different, but let's forget about all that. Let's get rid of that. What do we have the difference? Oh, this is a Tav, and this one's not. Oh, that's the male. Oh, this used to be the hey, but they put a top there in this replacement because it's identifying, you know, a female, okay, in the text. Okay, what's the difference over here between these two? Oh, it has a shin, and show, and that's show, and that's ma, and that's ma, and that's ra, and that's re. Okay, so why is it re? Oh, because they added that yod right there with that em. Oh, so that's plural. Oh, but that's masculine. Okay, and this oath right here, I know that's the ending that they add to feminine plural. So, oh, I got it. It's feminine plural. See? So you're always going to be dealing with that. OK? 
Okay. So words will look very, very similar to you. You just got to know your pieces. All right. So those are the only four ways. So why is that important? Because when you look at the passive form of the group number one, I told you earlier, this shares the same letter that the past tense, this is present we're talking about. The past tense is exactly like this. It looks just like this, exactly. So how would I know? How would I know the difference? So based off what you see right now and what you can think about, how would you know? I'm going to give everybody a shot. Tell me, what, what, what is it when it says you have four ways? You only have four ways. See if anybody can catch it. Because what it is, everyone in the language is just cracking the code. So if it's in the past and has exactly the same, and guess what? If you look up a top, you know a present tense by that wa right there. So it's missing the wa. So how would you know that it's in a present tense? <laughs> Versus a past tense. Because this is a question I ask myself. And they didn't tell me. I just I just look at it like, whoa, okay is found in these four ways. There's only four ways. There's only four ways. The four ways is going to be this masculine, singular, masculine, singular, masculine, singular, feminine, singular, feminine, singular, feminine, singular, feminine, masculine, plural, masculine, plural, masculine, plural, mas female, feminine, 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 plural. Okay. So this is the way that you're going to know. Okay. That something is in the in the present tense versus the past tense because it's missing the wa. You don't see the wa. The wa is not here. Why? Because it's passive, and we're using the letter noon, so we can't rely on that. So the difference is this: when you're talking about a present tense passive form, that is exactly like the past tense present form uh, passive form. The only way that you'll be able to tell the difference between the two is this. In the past tense, okay, they're going to use a proper noun to tell you that someone did something to someone. Okay. In the present tense, they're only going to use these things. They're only going to use ani or ata or at or who or a. Uh, uh, at or um, he or a naknu or a tem or hain. They're only going to use these, even though there's 12 of them. There's still there's still four categories: first category, second category, third category, fourth category. They're only going to use these to let you know that it's in a past tense. I mean, excuse me, present, forgive me, present tense. The past tense, they're going to use a name. So instead of saying I I was being guarded, okay? It's going to say the boy or Dawid was being guarded, or it might be Avraham, or it might be Reuven, it might be Sarah, it might be something like that, okay? So if it's in the past, they, okay, listen to this. If it's in the past, they have to tell you the name of the person. I hope you can see this. Got this pen. Weren't that weird? All right. Let's just think about this for a second. A past tense. If I'm going to tell you something about the past, I have to tell you who did it or who was it done to. I got to tell you that. If I'm going to tell you about something in the past, I got to identify the who. Okay. In the present tense, I don't need to identify it because it's happening right now. Okay. Remember, when you're reading this, remember they told us last week, you got to be careful because when you read the text, it's like when you're reading Pharaoh did something, it's in, a, um, in the present tense. You got to remember it's talking from back then, right? 
But when you're talking about something that an individual is doing, like I need, like I did so I'm doing something, or you were doing something, or he is doing something, and it's an active, they will use that wa up here. Okay. But if I'm talking about something in the present, just remember I'm presently doing it. And it's pa it's passive, it's happening to me. So I would say I was being guarded. Talking about smiles, you were. Okay, being guarded. He is being guarded. I am being guarded. You are being guarded. She is being guarded. We are. You see? So I don't have to tell you a name because it's, it's actively, I mean, excuse me, it's presently. Let me not get that confused. It's presently happening. Okay. Does this make sense? If it's in the past, they're going to tell you the name. This is the reason why they send you only have these four ways. It can only be done these four ways. That's the only way that it can be done in these four categories. With these three in particular ways that it could be done. Because I don't want you to get confused. When you identify the first person, second person, third person, 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 plural, plural, singular, singular. See, that's why they say it's four, because it can only be in one of these four areas here. So you're only going to ever see it as Nishbar or yeah, Nishmar, or you're only going to see it as Nishmoreth. You know, and then I'll have ani on it or ta or, you know, at or he. Okay. Nishmarim or nishmarim. Nishmarim can only be, it's only going to be a naknu or a tem or hain. That's what it's, that's what it's going to be. Okay. So you'll be able to see the difference that way. Because those are the only four ways. And you have to force yourself to understand that when you're talking in present tense, and they're telling us up here, and this is the truth. There are only four ways of using the Hebrew verb in the present tense. That's it. That's it. And these are the four different ways. One, two, three, four. They ask about these three persons. First person, second person, third person. And because this is the feminine right here, we got to give her first person, second person, third person. This is masculine, but it's plural. So we got to give them the first person, second person, the third person, first person, second person, third person. Okay. Any questions? There are only four ways of using this present tense verb. There's only four ways. Okay. Now let's talk about this now. So here in a conversation, um, let me see this here. Let's see some sentences using the passive form. All right. So I don't want you to get confused, but they're using our vocabulary words now. All right. So let's start with number one, Shema. Right. So who wants to read the first sentence? at the very top oh yeah i'm sorry right uh let me write underline it i'm sorry i'm looking at this one let's read this one okay hash hashmer no hash um hasher uh, hash sheer nishma Nishmar, good. Hashir Nishmar. So tell the class what each one of those tell us to break, break, break the sentence down for us and let us know. When you look over on this side, I want you to attach these letters to this side over here and tell me about the first letter and what does that represent? Tell me about what is what is song. Tell me about what that dot means in the middle right there. Tell me about what this noon means right here and tell me what this word means according to what you see right over here. 
Um, the hey is the. Uh -huh. Perfect. And then the shin, the dot inside the shin, uh, it's two, two S's or two S-H. Like shush yes. or something. Yes, yeah, so you can hold it longer. Shh. Like hashir. See, I don't have to go hash. I don't have to go hash and then sheer. I don't go hash sheer. No, hashir. See, I, I'm just holding it longer. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And then, what does the actual word sheer mean? Thing. Song. Mm -hmm. You're good there. It's a noun. Okay. Okay. So the song, okay, is the song right here is not the verb. The song right here is a noun. Okay. That which is next right here, this is the verb. So we have a noun and then we have a verb. Okay. So tell me about the verb. Break it down. Is being something. Yes. So the noon right here represents passive. That means that they're not doing the action, but the action is happening, right, to this. Okay. Okay. So it's passive. Remember, passive means that they're not actively doing it, meaning it was done. Okay. So that's why you hear on the end right here, heard, that's past tense, okay? In a song that, well, excuse me, not past, present tense, being, it's being heard. It's not is heard or, or, or um, is heard, it's being. That being right there is that passive form of this noon. So remember, look at that as being. So switch out the word passive and just put it for being. That's all. You, that's what they were trying to tell us in the beginning of the lesson. Okay, because it's it's listen, B E, and here's our cl our our clue I N G, that I N G right there it means present. Okay, that's what it is present. That's why it's called the participle because it's presently happening. It's being is being heard right now. So when we read stuff, we have to understand in the narrative's mind, it's they're saying what is going on right then. But when we read, we don't be like, well, it's not going on right now because it's we're looking at it in the past. But for them, when they wrote it, they're writing it as it's being done. So when, when we read the scripture, we'll be able to like, well, right now at that time to make the story make sense, that was happening right then versus, oh, that happened in the past. Good job. All right. Um, who's next? I feel like I'm not going to read that. <laughs> Um, Hayeled Nishma Maat Nishmaath. Uh huh. So here, excellent. So here we have Hayalada. Okay. Excuse me, Hayolda. Okay. So this is Ha, right? And then we got that Hai, which is the double one. So Hai Yol. Hai. Next one, Yol which is that I had to make two of them. So the first one's going to be this, and the second one's going to be this, and I go y'all, and then my next one is da. Hi, y'all, da. Hi, y'all, da. Meaning the girl, okay? This is implied, right? And then being. So what part of this sentence or this word right here is being? The noon. Thank you. That's it. The noon is being. And then it's being heard. So Shema is the three-letter root, but now it's feminine because we're talking about the girl. That's why they're adding the top right here on the end. Okay. Now, I hope that you can see that what they're saying here is... Um, let me ask you a question. Is this right here a first person, second person, 
third person. First person? No, it's the third person because we're talking about the girl. Okay, so the first person, second person, third person. Oh, it's someone right? talking about the girl. Somebody's talking about the girl. Okay. Good. You understand? So I'm trying to get our mind because I had a tough time with this. I was like, well, how do I know? I want you to start looking for it. Okay. The reason why we know it's a girl is because that Tav right on the end up here, there is no Tav or nothing. So we know that this right here, the song must be referring to a masculine because there is no TH or Tav on the end. There is no Eem. There is no oath. Okay. Because whatever's on the end has to match the actual noun. So if this is the noun, the verb got to match it. This is a feminine. This has to be feminine. Okay. This one right here. Hashirim Nishmaim. Hear that? Hashirim Nishmaim. That's not an accident. Does this here match this one in terms of its plurality? Yes or no? Yes. And what letters are they using? Uh, Yud and Mem Sophie. Thank you. That's what they're using. So is that masculine or feminine? Masculine. Is it singular or plural? Plural. Thank you. So does it match one of the four ways? <laughs> yes, it does. It's going to be one of those four ways. Okay. First person, second person, third person. You see? So now this one right here. Okay. So what they've done is this is the singular and this is the plural. This is the singular and this is the plural. So how many ways can we look at this? First person, second person, or one, excuse me, first, second way, third way, fourth way. So does that satisfy what they said? Yes, it does. You just got to figure out who you're talking about. Are you talking about a singular? Are you talking about a plural? Are you talking about a masculine? Are you talking about a feminine? Okay. Oops. Let me see. Pause, resume, share. Okay. Um, the next one's to eat. Right. So let me just ask someone right here. Tell me about that. Why is that there? Um, that's a that's a girl. That's feminine. Yeah. So it's a feminine. But when we look across at our our sentence, is the matzah is being eaten. So what does it tell us about the matzah? That girls are eating the matzah. No, that the matzah itself is feminine. Uh, how do I know oh, it's feminine, Dr. Okay. Because of the ah. Oh, boy. Somebody's on it. It's the ah. The ah. Matzah. Torah. Adama. Taruma. Uh, you see? So we can have feminine things. We can have feminine people. Okay? So when we look at the scriptures... And this is the reason why I was able to find what I was able to find about the sisters and the mother and all this kind of stuff is because I look at these things. I want to know, am I talking about something that's masculine or am I talking about something that's feminine? I'm looking at that. When I talk, when I look at fruit and I'm looking at the ground, I'm looking at what is it? What is he saying? What is he saying? Why is he using the masculine here? Why is he using the feminine? What's the, what's, what, what are we to understand? Why would he choose? The feminine to be the one of, of service, because avoda means to do service. So what does service mean? It means to actively be doing something. Why? Why does she have to be the one doing the service? Is she a slave? No, because when I design a female, her whole purpose is to bring forth. The, like the, the plants, they all come up out of the earth. So she has to do work to bring it out. See, so the masculine is the one who places it there, but the feminine is the one who does the work. 
because that's the way I design her to do it. So if we understand these things, we'll get it. We'll be able to understand it. Okay. Uh, like our soul, you know, nafeshka, right? So the nafeshka or your soul or nafesh is feminine. So if we know it's feminine, then what, what do you know? I'm, I'm, I'm a female. No, you are supposed to be actively bringing forth something. That's why I made you. You understand? I made you both male and female, but also too, both of you share what they call an nefesh. You both share a feminine um, soul. You understand? It's feminine. So when it's feminine, it's supposed to do something. It's supposed to be active. It's supposed to bring forth something. Okay. Um, let me ask you about the, the lekem up at the top. Uh, tell me about the bread. What can you tell me about the bread that everybody won't see, but you can see? Tell me about this that you know now when you look at this way that is structured. What, what is, what is, tell me something about the bread besides it being named Lakem. And it's, it's male. It. It's masculine. <laughs> because it's a result of what? It's, right? It's, oh, so, it, it, yes, it had baked. to be neat, yet it had to be baked. Wow. That's why the feminine, you look at the feminine to be baked as a, it's called a effa or ofa. It means you hear that ah on the end. It means she did something to make it come to be. You, you guys getting what I'm saying? <laughs> so now when you look at it, you're like, oh, this is masculine. Oh, but it took something to make it. It just didn't happen on its own. So it had to go through a, it had to go through a feminine process. You get it? Yes. So what I'm saying is, is when we look at the language, right? We got to stop just looking at words. You know, the bread is being eaten. That's great. Fine. Whatever. I can do that. Uh, the, the I got it. Not a problem. Right? So we got that going on, but we also have sounds. You know, ne. You know, n. You hear that? Oh, well, n means passive. That's what you got to start telling yourself. Okay, the lechem, and it says ne akal. Oh, it's a call. It's, it's by itself. There's no nakala. So I know that the bread automatically must be masculine. It means it went through a process in order to bring it to its end. See? Okay. My question here is: so this means this mean this brings it to life. What yes. you're saying it's it's constantly <laughs> living. The the language is a living language oh my gosh is it's living it's a living language everything here is active and but even in its passive form listen it's still active why why okay here let me explain this to you guys so i say it's active right and we go grammatically oh that's the one doing the action but they're not telling you that the passive person is the one who's actually receiving the action. So something is still actively happening. Like the bread had to go through the process of being baked. It received the action. <laughs> so even though it's, it's, it's being passive, it's passive to say, okay, I'm going to allow you to do the action on me. I'm going to allow you to do this because it's going to, something's going to, there's a change happening. So whether it's active or passive, it's still living, it's still moving. Something is still happening. That's the beauty of the language. So what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is like, when we read this stuff, I'm not just reading, you know, how matzah calleth. I'm not trying to learn so I can sound like I understand what I'm saying. I want to know like, why? Why is you saying the nalakeleth? What, what should I know? Well, I should know that the matzah is feminine. I should know that. I should know that. Okay. So just off the top, tell me the difference between lekem and matzah. One is bread. The other one is matzah. What's the difference between matzah and regular bread? Let's break uh, it down. Matzah is Pesach and bread is, is not, not during the year. Right. Okay. So let's break it down. So when you think about bread, bread goes through a process and they add different things to give it fermentation before it's in that process. It's called matzah. 
doesn't have any of that fermentation, doesn't have any of that souring agent. Okay, see what I'm saying? So if the if the bread is the masculine and the matzah is the feminine, and Yah's asking for the matzah for seven days that hasn't, what is he saying? I want the bread. Matzah is pure and it's undefiled. The bread has been defiled because it's been added to, because it's going through its own process. She hasn't received any of that. She's just what she is. <laughs> so now you can see what he's asking for, because if it's feminine and he's asking for matzah, during the Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread, it's not just a Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's a bread of purity. It's a bread that's been undefiled. She Nothing's been added to her. That's why you got to learn. Huh? Oh, my gosh. Yes. So, Lechem is the male will give something to her, meaning that the, the yeast it would bring, that would, it will it 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 in no way defile to bring life. So, let me ask you a question. A male is like a bread and a female is like matzah. When a male comes into this woman, what is he bringing? Life. Yes. And he's bringing fermentation. He's bringing life to her. He's, 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 he's going to puff her up. When she gets puffed up, what happens to her stomach? It grows. They said that you got some bread in the what? Oven. <laughs> you got something in the oven. So before she's so really when you think of a matzah and it's talking about feminine and you're talking about purity, what you're really talking about is virgin bread. You get wow. it? Yes. I can see why the matzah is better for you or the diet is better for you because it doesn't have all the impurities or add it have the impurities that's brought upon because what comes out the male even though it's life that comes out and it sounds wonderful it, it actually brings decay that's why if a man has a seminal emission or he has uh, intercourse with his wife he has to bathe his body that's why he said don't go next to your wives don't don't touch her for three days i'm coming to see you because that life that came out of him will eventually turn to death. Do you understand? From that scientific method, okay? See? So this is what the Most High wants us to see about the language. I'm not trying to get you just to read Hebrew. They got up here, the bread is being eaten, but... Did they tell you anything I'm telling you right now? No. Because it's not about that for them because they're not, they're not on that. They're not, they're religious. They're not agriculturalists. They don't understand how the environment works in the things that Yah has, has made. Now ask me, where did I learn this? And when did I learn it? The most high gave it to you? Just now. Wow. I didn't know this. Mm. that's why I'm excited because he's showing me and he's showing us right now. He's showing us what this is about. <laughs> so this is why digressing, this is why he's only talking to Israel, correct? Correct. Because only Israel would understand what he's saying. <laughs> When I thought about my class today, I was like, you know, yeah, what, what can I get out of, you know, the, the description and all this kind of stuff? Most High showed me a lot of stuff in that Torah portion. You see, only what we're learning here is what the Most High wants us to know, his little flock. I want you to know what it is. I want you to know. I'll take their information and show you what it is. I, I, I didn't know this prior to talking to you about this right now. I didn't know that they're both the same, made of the same substance, but this one, this masculine right here has something in it. He's been contaminated. He's been puffed up. The matzah is equivalent to a virgin. Virgin bread ain't been touched. Purity. Why is the most high looking for purity? He said, if I find any of it in your dwellings, you know, and a person who refuses to be pure, I'm cutting you off. Those are Yahweh's ways. 
Isn't this beautiful? Can hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah, yes. right? Praise Yah. So when we talk about, like I asked you guys earlier, I said, okay, well, what can we learn from the noon? You know, like why did they use it as passive? There must be some reason why the most high wants us to know, or why did he put that letter right there? Because guess what? Let me just make you happy. These letters here are Yah's letters. These are his letters. They're not their letters. They're his letters, which is connected to his agriculture. You understand? You see? Is it the seed? Because what happens with the seed is passive. Listen to what he's telling us. The seed is passive. The seed is passive. Something has to happen to it in order for it to open up, in order for it to grow, it just sits there until an action is taken upon it. Woo, you better hear what he's saying. I asked earlier, do any of us know why he used the noon to put this as a passive form? It's his. They didn't put it there. He did. Why? Because the seed is passive. You got to do yeah. something with that. You got to attach it somewhere in order for it to operate. It's, it's passive until something happens to it. So that's you have the reason. To... Mm. That's the reason why the seed is passive. I don't know if you've been to the store lately but my wife brought home a whole bunch of packages of different seeds and carrots and celery and everything and they're sitting in packet plastic packages and you got to go in you got to grab them and you got to put them in the dirt and then you got to put some sunlight and you got to do some water and you got to put it in an environment in order for it to to for something to happen to it but as long as it's sitting there nothing's happening so what it means is that it's passive. That's the reason why they're using this letter without telling us. They told us it's passive, but they didn't tell you why. But now Yah has showed us why. Let me tell you guys something. I want you to hear me and hear me well. I need you just as much as you need me. <laughs> we need each other. Because... If you weren't here, I would have never found that out. Hallelujah. You understand? What you 